Uh, but you, you had a move. You moved back from Japan back to the States. So what was, what was that like? Um, yeah, so I'm back in Vegas. Uh, I was here 20 something years ago. Um, going to finish out my teaching career here and my scouting career here, but, um, it was, it was great. You know, I had reverse culture shock. Of course, yeah. there's just a lot of differences in cultures, but it's all good. Um, then my family arrived over the summer. So we're all together again in under one roof. We were separated for like nine or 10 months. Wow. And it's hard, you know, just FaceTiming with the little ones, but, um, I'm happy to be back in the States for sure. And the next move will be Thailand in about 12 years or so where, uh, we have our spot already picked out. <laughs> is that, is that retirement? Yeah. Yeah. We already have a retirement place there. Interesting. And I used to teach there and have okay. friends in this small city called Wahin, Thailand. Yeah. So you've, you've been so, all over. Look, why, of all places to retire, because I want to retire in New Zealand, but okay. Thai, Thailand, why Thailand? Oh, it's once you go, you just may fall in love with it. Mm. I visited, so next year will be my 20th anniversary with Thailand. So oh. I visited 18 times before I moved there. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, okay, everything's cheaper. It's super relaxed. Um, it's just, you feel like you're on vacation all the, all the time, even when you're working. It's just a very chill vibe. And um, I don't know, some like people just get smitten by it and they just uh, can't get enough of it. Um, so retiring there has its advantages because um, it's way cheaper to live there. You know, we bought a place already, so that's all set up. Mm. And uh, monthly expenses will be very low. So we could probably even maybe save some money during retirement. So now when, when you, when you went to Japan, you, you kept your U S citizenship, correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. So I like, didn't give it up. So you, so mm -hmm. you, you've been paying dual taxes. Then you got no. Japanese or it's how it's no. Japanese. Like, not, no, no. Like, how's all that work? There's no, no double taxation. No double tax. So so like when, when you, they, when you yeah. retire to Thailand, are you still going to get like your social security 401k and all that fun stuff? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I won't have, to, I don't think I'll have to pay taxes on it. Wow. Yeah. No, I won't have to pay tax. That's another advantage too. I won't have to pay taxes on it. I might have to pay there. I'm not sure what the deal is with the retirement visa. Yeah. But uh, I have to ask you. I don't think so. Yeah. But no, if, um, so that's another advantage too. Um, my wife likes it there. So that's important too, right? She's Japanese. No, I have permanent, I have permanent residency in Japan. So I can mm. live there anytime. I want. It's like a green card in the States. Yeah. But I am and will, uh, I am working on my Italian citizenship now. Okay. So I'll be a dual citizen. I found out that I can get it because my great grandfather um, was born in Sicily and then he moved to the United You can see the Sicily poster in the background there. Mm -hmm. It's on my, that's my vision board. <laughs> um, so he moved to the States uh, when he was one and then he had my grandfather um, before he became a U.S. citizen. So it was passed on to my grandfather, my mother, myself, and even my kids. So I would like to spend part of my retirement in Europe too. My, mm. my wife lives in Germany, Scotland, England. So she likes Europe a lot. I, lo I love Europe. So maybe we'll spend like the summers there and the winters in, in Thailand, that type of thing. I got to travel more, man. Like Italy is on my bucket list. My, my, one of my best friends is actually on his honeymoon right now in Italy for another week or so. And I'm seeing his Instagram stories. So I shout out to my buddy, Chris and Carly. Um, and it's just like, damn, I got to go there. And plus I, I have family from there. Like I, my grandmother was born in the States, but grew up maybe the first 15 years or so in Italy, then moved back, went to high school in the States, met my grandfather and the rest is history. My grandfather was born here, but I'm, I'm 50% Italian. My mother's 100% Italian. So you might, you might be eligible for I'll, it. You have I'll to check, check it out. That, Cause it would be my, yeah. my great grandmother was definitely born in Italy. That Italy, that's that's a did fact. She, okay, did she have, did, well, did your great-grandmother become a U.S. citizen? That I don't know. Okay, and if she did, if she, ha if she became a U.S. citizen after your grandmother was born, mm -hmm. then there's a good chance that it's good. But if she became a citizen before your grandmother was born, it's dead, a okay. U.S. citizen. Well, so, yeah, there's a lot, and there's a backup. There's like a, because of COVID, and because so many people, oh, yeah. you know, sure. want to leave the States, um, Italian Americans and want to maybe retire there, there's like a four year backup just to get an appointment. 
at the at the consulate. To, to, yeah. yeah. So I'm gathering documents now, which have been a, a big puzzle, right? Like there's all these pieces. I have to get birth certificate of my grandfather in Sicily. Yep. I had to hire somebody. It took a year to track that down because they move at their own pace. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then, you know, I had to get death certificates, marriage certificates, everyone down the line to me. It's, right? it's, and- it's a, it's a lot of work. Cause, um, my, my other side, the Polish side, um, my grandmother spent years and years doing like the family history in a binder just of all the lineages of her side, my, my, my grandfather's side. And it was in a binder, probably about this thick. And like wow. doing history on our family crest. And it's just, it was really cool to look through. I did an eighth grade report on it. It mm. was really fascinating. And now on the other side, my mom's side, the Italian side, her cousin, her cousin, Billy is doing the exact same thing with uh, my mom's side of the family. So my mom sent me an email like a month or two ago with the original writing, like a photocopy of the writing of Ellis Islands. When one of our ancestors came through Ellis Islands and like how they had to sign their name in the ledger and everything. So family histories, all the lineage, all the paperwork, it's just, you know, someone's got to do it. <laughs> someone's got to go through and do everything. So shout out mm-hmm. to my grandmother Mimi for doing that book and my mom's wow. cousin Billy for doing that in the family she history. Did it. What was the motivation? I mean, she's a teacher, so mm-hmm. she just likes knowledge. Um, and she retired, she needs something to do. And she wants something to pass on. She made photocopies because uh, my dad's the oldest of six boys. So she made copies for all her sons. Oh, um, wow. And it's just, it's sitting in my... uh. At my, at my dad's house, my parents' house back you in Boston. You probably have a lot of the documents you need. I probably, to get honestly. Polish citizenship. The Polish I, I citizenship. Think, I, no, that's an, well, you want to get EU citizenship, right? Then you could live anywhere in the EU, and then you're covered by the EU healthcare system, mm. which oh, is great, damn. right? Damn, so that's, that's a good another, point. Right? And then if you have kids, right, then your kids can probably go to school, university for free or next to nothing in the EU. So that's another reason, you know, I want to give my kids that option as well. My kids are dual citizens already. They're American and Japanese and they'll have Italian as well. So could they get like American health care? Like if I had to go to the hospital and I can go to the New York City hospital, they could build an like EU insurance? Mm, I don't know oh, about that okay, one. Okay, I'm I'm not, sure. I had to go to the hospital in Europe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, so that, that, that like would be surgery too good to be or true. something. Yeah. No, I... So, yeah. But um, American health care is so expensive. Yeah, it's very, right. it's very expensive. It's I just it's I just expensive. saved five hundred and ten dollars by taking my family, my dependents, off of my work health care, mm-hmm. and I signed them up to um, affordable care act, uh, affordable ca- uh, health care act. Care, yeah, the ACA, Ob- care act. Obamacare, yeah. Obamacare, right, Obamacare, right. So, so because of that, I, I'm saving five hundred and ten dollars. My my work health care wanted to jack it up. The the dependents were, I guess. They said a lot of people left it, so there's not a lot of money in the pool, so they had to jack they it up. They got to jack so, it up. Yeah. Yeah, but for me, it's okay. I mean, I pay $15 a paycheck, so that's good. Damn. Right? But for my family, it was going to be, if I kept my family on it, it was going to be about $780 a month. Wow. That's insane. Yeah, I pay, I pay $92 a week for my, just, just to get the benefit. Just, 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 I pay that to pay more, to pay more. Right, right. This, this, they can cover it, and I gotta pay the rest. Gotta, that's only a deductible. So I gotta pay that. You might, you might be pay able deductible. to get on the Affordable Care Act and get it cheaper. Maybe, I mean, maybe we'll see. I mean, my my mm-hmm. work, my work. Um, I love my job. They take very well, good care of me, and the health and the health insurance isn't something they can actually control. So that benefits mm-hmm. package is through the, uh, I guess, a third party con- who I'm contracted through. So it's nothing to do with my actual employer. Um, right. But hey, same thing. Yeah. Eventually, I'll, I'll. Pay for health insurance through podcasting. So one podcast at a time. 